Welcome back, watch fans. Today I've got a Skyme, 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 uh, multifunction three time zone watch. <laughs> yes, uh, this is another off the beaten path uh, watch review. Um, <laughs> this is a great watch. It's kind of silly looking. Uh, I seem to recall when this watch first came out, um, there were advertisements all over the internet it said the watch that that uh shook the world or the watch that is shaking the world and i suppose so because i actually bought this in afghanistan but now you can get it at walmart for about 30 dollars uh you can also get it online uh, i've seen it for as low as 25 dollars um i paid 40 in in a bazaar so uh i guess um yeah it's cheaper now, but it is a cool looking watch. I, I will say that. And uh, what I find to be completely fascinating about this watch is that um, it, it does in fact have three separate clocks. Now that's not just to say that this is one really fancy movement. It is literally three separate movements in there. You have a digital one, which also provides an alarm feature. <clears throat> you can see it's got a couple buttons there. Um, and these buttons actually also control uh, this movement as well. Uh, this is a separate movement. It is a Japan uh, Epson movement. And this one is also uh, a movement. Both use <clears throat> women's uh, small, small movements. And if I can, I'll put a picture of them right up there. But... Uh, Pretty interesting. Um, I actually just opened it up to change the batteries, and thankfully so, because I couldn't figure out how to change the alarm on the uh, digital one there on the lower left. And at about midnight, it would go off for like half a minute, just beeping and beeping. And, you know, usually I sleep through it, but, but it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, so two Epson, and I assume this one here is a Chinese, Chinese movement. Uh, surprising that uh, they would actually use... Uh, Japanese Epson SSI, I'm sorry, SII Seiko movements in here uh, when they could just as easily produce them from, <clears throat> uh, obtain them from, from China. Since this is a Chinese watch, uh, I can only assume that the Seiko movements are just so inexpensive that they go ahead and put them in there for the reliability of that. Um, the Chinese do also make watches, uh, watch movements that are of that size, but probably not as reliable. Um, since they are such small parts as the Japanese uh, ones are. Uh, obviously, what makes this watch really interesting is the style. I think that's why anybody would realistically purchase it, but it does have three separate time zones, which is quite interesting. And they all obviously have a second hand or, you know, digitally or analog, but uh, they do all work. What I do find interesting, though, is that the one at the top is a... Uh, much nicer Seiko movement. The one in the lower right is a slightly uh, less expensive Seiko movement. And the one in the lower left is probably the most accurate. Uh, they're all quartz, of course, but the one, the one in the lower left seems to be the most accurate. The one at the top um, holds its time better, but the one on the right will change. Uh, it will actually lose time um, uh, although we just changed the battery, so that could have something to do with it as well. But uh, they, they all they all seem to gain and lose time slightly different. But still, it's a fun watch. Most people are going to look at the time, the lower left and the one on the top. She so says time one, time two, but this one is also independent. All three are completely independent, completely independent movements as well. And interestingly enough, they also use... Um, different batteries uh, as well. Like I just had to change the battery for the one on the top. Um, it was a standard 626. And the other one here uses a 626. And this one uses a coin battery. <clears throat> uh, not a CRC 2032. I can't remember what it is. A uh, 2025, I think it was. Three volt. But, um, I mean, it is a really cool watch, right? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I can't deny it. It's, it's Chinese made with uh, Japanese movements. But it is a it is a very cool watch, uh, and and that's why I bought it because I needed something. I didn't want to mess up my um, my Skyhawk AT. But um, so I'll just kind of go into it. It it is a three ATM. I don't know that I would necessarily ever wear it in the water, 
this is a decent watch strap. It's leather. Um, but, you know, <laughs> the, I think the watch strap would pretty much get destroyed. Uh, but three ATMs, so I'll put a chart up there, of course, like I always do. Uh, you can do some basic swimming in it, uh, basically the pool. Uh, you can wash your hands, uh, basic basic splash resistance. I really don't know that I would swim in it. I, I, I just got to be honest. I mean, with all these buttons, you know, that's a lot of point points of entry. There's a big gasket that runs the perimeter of this as well. Um, and I greased it. I don't know if I'll keep this watch. I've had it for a while. It's kind of cool. It looks interesting. I'll put it on so you can kind of get an idea of um, the presence it has. I have seven and a half inch wrists. So this is, it's a it's a good size watch. You know, and you wear this and somebody's like, what is that? It's like some sort of a uh, Bioshock. I, I don't want to call it steampunk, but some kind of just beast looking computer watch, right? And it's it's got presence and I wear it and people are like, what is that? And it's definitely a conversation starter. I mean, I wear it just because I think it's fun. Uh, but, but you know, I've got big hands. Like I can palm a basketball, lift it up with one hand and you see how beast this watch is on here. Um, let's see what else can I say about it. So it's uh, name is stamped on there. On the inside of the, of the watch strap, you saw that in the front. Uh, Skame, Skame. If if you know how to pronounce it better than I do, please let me know in the comments, because I just do not know. Um, it's the only one that I have from them. Uh, it's an interesting Chinese brand. They don't really. It's. I mean, it's not. There's no intent there to hide that. But they make. They make a lot of really interesting watches. Uh, their designs should not be laughed at because they are quite interesting. They really. Uh, I think they look for talent in places like uh, Scandinavia, um, Germany, um, and, and, and even places like uh, India and stuff like that to look for different talent, talent for designs. So uh, even though it's all manufactured there, um, it is quite an interesting uh, company. And I may end up uh, reviewing some more of these watches if I find some to be particularly unique and interesting. Like this thing, I don't know what this is, some sort of ruler. I don't even I don't even know what the measurements are, but <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I think that there's probably some loom on here. I don't know to what benefit, but we'll check that out. Let's do that right now. All right, top hands are have loom. Probably for no other purpose other than the fact that they just came with it. Uh, I can't imagine that there was any real intent for you to use this at night. But uh, <laughs> I think from whatever watch these hands originally uh, were intended for with this movement, that's probably just why it just came with it. Um, let's see. So we already talked about the ATM, uh, the different movements inside here. And I showed some pictures of that. Um, not much else. Let's see. Uh, and I think we'll do some some measurements. This isn't something you necessarily measure uh, diagonally, so just measure it straight out. It is a 50 millimeter watch, and the lug is. You know, that's safe to say that's about 32, <laughs> 32 lug. And let's check the depth. 15. So 15, not horrible, but yes, it is quite big. Um, this is a very interesting mineral crystal. It is hardened. Um, I'm quite sure there's no sapphire, although it doesn't say anything to it, but it is hardened. Um, very cool bevel on it. Um, I mean, this is just a, a really cool, fun watch. So I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to trash it. This, this is a very interesting design. Um, I love wearing it. Uh, again, don't know if I'm going to keep it because I just have so many watches and I really got to keep them moving. But, uh, um, yep, uh, $29, I think, is is the standard going rate for these uh, I, on uh, when I just did a search for it. So, but uh, if you like this, uh, please click the like button. If you have any comments or want to discuss it, please discuss at the bottom in the comments below. Um, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more watch reviews like this. Thank you very much.